Welcome to another episode of the Gay Barchive Show, where we talk about gay bars from the past. I'm your host, Art Smith, and today we bring you a special segment, an interview by Matt Scalarud of Pink Media with Helen Buford, owner of the historic Julius Bar in New York City. Well, hello, welcome to I Love Gay Today. And this is the second of what we consider kind of a very important uh, interview series and story getting out there because nationwide we're reading more and more about how bars and restaurants, you know, they've been struggling during the last year in the pandemic and now things are starting to open up, there's hope. And uh, what are they all doing in terms of, you know, different strategies and things to survive and make it through this year so we can uh, hopefully appreciate and be with them all this summer. And right now we're here with an icon from uh, from New York City. There's there's several that are just re- that probably most folks have heard of. This is Helen Buford from the Julius Bar in New York. How are you? Good. Hi, how are you? Thank you for having me on. Well, you, you guys have uh, I've been there several times. I, in fact, I was on a uh, I was on a drag queen history tour of, of downtown New York and Julius Bar was kind of the, the, the meeting point and the center point of all that. Oh, that's wonderful. That's yeah. wonderful. Yes. Yeah, so- it's been near and dear to my heart. And, uh, but no, tell, tell us a little bit about the history of Julius Bar, your history with it and so forth. And so folks get a better sense of, of who you guys are. Okay. So actually, uh, Julius's bar um, has been there since 1864, the building. Wow. And then in the 20s, it was a speakeasy. And then in 1934, it got its first uh, liquor license, a legal place. Wow. And, um, you know, since then, the uh, the uh, the part that puts Julius's on the LGBT um, history is on April twenty first, nineteen sixty six. There was a, a group called the Mattachine Society that was headed by Dick Leish, and um, what they were doing was they were they were protesting um, the fact that uh, openly gay men could not walk into a bar and have a drink without um, the place being shut down because they were considered disorderly. So it's uh, it's kind of amazing once you hear that and then you today you 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 compare it to today and you say, oh, yeah. wow, yeah. somebody's going to turn us down because we're gay to have a drink, right? So uh, my husband and myself we owned the bar for 21 years, and um, 12 years ago he passed away, and I was left to uh, care for this bar on my own. So I kind of uh, jumped in and learned everything there was to do. Prior to that, I was in Manhattan maybe three or four times a year, and I found myself there five and six times a week. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yes. No, that's that's quite a story. It's interesting. Uh, In (laughs) April 66, that was just a few weeks before I was born. (laughs) So it's been it's been 50 plus years. Yes. And it's a few if it's a few after I was born. So. <laughs> <laughs> but no, uh, with, with everything that's going on, especially, you know, things have been closed down for well over a year, New York being the epicenter of everything. So uh, uh, even even before some of the fundraising things you've been doing, do you feel there's hope that uh, that you're going to be able to get things at least a little bit back to uh, the way they were? Yes, I believe so. I think we're heading in that right direction. Um Right now, the capacity is being increased, Good. but for places like myself um, that are smaller, you can't really um, increase the capacity without having bar service, and that's what we're waiting for. Yeah. Um, the outdoor uh, the outdoor dining helps us because that increases our table space to be able to serve customers, and uh, as the weather gets nicer, we're actually able to fill up those tables and serve customers throughout the day so it has been wonderful this past weekend and uh, i believe it's only going to get better we were all wondering too it's uh, every time i go in the city we were all wondering like what this winter is going to be like with all this kind of new outdoor dining that that is taking over some of the street areas and Mm -hmm. this february has been brutal so uh, yes at least you know when you talk about hope last week last week was one of the nicest weeks we've had all year. And I I feel like everybody's starting to think now about what they're going to be doing and and going back out again. Uh, Well, yes, that's correct. It's the the outdoor spaces are pretty interesting because according to the rules that they have set for us, 
they're supposed to be they're supposed to be outdoor spaces and a lot of these spaces are enclosed and they're outdoor indoor spaces so <laughs> that's a little uh, interesting too um what <laughs> that's a whole nother story for a whole yeah. nother day yeah. but uh but yes uh, so what we have done is i I've been economizing with the money that we have been gifted from the GoFundMe and from the Gill Foundation and every wonderful person who, you know, has donated as generously as they can. Yeah. Um, so I want that money to go far with supplies, paying the employees, paying the bills and so forth. And so for, you know, I spent most of the summer trying to figure out what's the most economical way for us to do it that looks different, looks kind of cute. Um, and interesting, and we decided on tents, and they're actually little greenhouses, and we put the tables in there, and some fun lights and decorations. Um, it's not there; they were not feasible for winter because of the structure. It's very, uh, it's very light. Yeah. However, um, when, when we got to Christmas time uh, of last year. After the 20th of December, when the indoor dining was closed again, unfortunately, we weren't able to stay open and it wasn't enough to sustain us. So we didn't open again until February. And now we're out and yeah. people are coming and sitting in our tents. <laughs> yeah. uh, mm -hmm. I love that. I'm looking forward to being there as well. And uh, yes, but but the Gill Foundation, they come out and uh, was that something that um, uh, was it a grant that you had to apply for or did they come to you? And how, how did that work? Yes, actually, what happened was uh, a customer actually was the one that wrote to them and said, hey, you know, I don't know if you know, but Julius is, has a GoFundMe and they're looking for help. Yeah. And they reached out to me and uh, it was wonderful from there. They gave me um, some funds during the summer and um, and we worked together. And and then as the as the fall came and the winter came. Yeah. And now the money started to run out. I said, you know, is there any way to help me even more? And they were generous enough to do so. So they did, and they they uh, gave me additional funds. And then they yeah. said, um, "Well, let's do a fundraiser. We'll match um, the next twenty five thousand that you raise." So that's what we're trying to do okay. is is actually um, is actually raise money for that for them to match it. Yeah. Oh, that's great because I know they've been working, uh, you know, with you and with Stonewall Inn and just a, a, yes. a handful of others. But yeah, the Gill Foundation. It's interesting. Um, um, I got, I, I used to work with Tim Gill on some projects on, in the world of mm -hmm. LGBT media back in the early 2000s. And uh, yes. he and I got together in Denver for breakfast and chatted about ways to work together even more. And uh, I've always, mm -hmm. uh, he and his team, they've always had a very fond place in my heart. So it's wonderful all the, almost 20 years later that all this, that they're, that they're doing this with y'all. Oh yes. I, I, I think they're wonderful and I can't wait to meet them. They told me that they were going to come this summer. Yeah. And uh, it's going to be a beautiful day when I get to meet them in person and actually give them a hug and say, <laughs> say thank you for saving us. You know, we, um, yeah, we're we're so we're incredibly thankful um, for their work. And the one thing, and I and I can say it here with confidence, is that once everything is doing well, uh, have every intention of giving them back the money that they gave me so they can help others. Yeah. So um, you know, and for me, all the years that I have been running this bar. I have always gave, given money to help others. And it's very hard for me to accept or to say, you know, I need help now, yeah. but I'm learning. Yeah. <laughs> I'm learning. <laughs> I got the feeling. I think a lot of us are wired that way. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So no, that's there amazing. And I, I look forward to, I'm going to be back in the city here in the next few weeks and uh, especially with the weather getting as it is. And uh, I'll, I look forward to being able to uh, come back. I, I'll plan to stop on by. I'll let you know when I'm going to be there. And uh, it'll be great to just connect in the real world. And, and I Absolutely. Wish, wish you all the best here in the meantime. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Absolutely. Well, thanks for being here with us and sharing a little of your story with us. And uh, like I said, look forward to connecting. You got it, Matt. Thank all you right. very much. Have Take a care. great day. Bye.